Hi guys, um, this is the first of two um, presentations slash sort of podcasts around cross-sectional anatomy. This first one is going to focus on the brain and the next one is going to focus on the bony structures, so facial bones and cranial bones. Um, as you're probably aware, in the OSCE, um, your cross-sectional anatomy is going to be split into two just like this, basically. Um, so hopefully this will mirror what will happen in your OSCE. So today's learning outcomes, what I'd like you to be able to do by the end of today is to identify different areas of the brain, um, basically discerning between um, the different ventricles, uh, the different lobes, which can sometimes prove a little bit tricky, and also identifying um, the meningeal structures, the sort of more common ones that you're likely to see. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, the meninges is essentially split into three different layers. You've got the pia mater, which is the innermost layer, the arachnoid mater, and also the dura mater. And it's the dura mater that splits the hemispheres and also splits, uh, differentiates between the cerebrum and the cerebellum as well. And also what we're going to be doing is looking at the structures that reside within uh, the basal ganglia. So just a very brief word on baselines. Um, some of you have been out on your uh, neural placements and probably seen this out there. Um, neural uses a very different baseline to other um, hospitals, uh, district general hospitals usually. Uh, they tend to use uh, the anthropological or a variation of the anthropological baseline. So the anthropological baseline basically goes from the external auditory meatus to the infraorbital margin, which is that sort of a baseline there. Now, this obviously has a, has a good thing in that um, it reduces beam hardening artifacts, uh, but what it does do, of course, is increase uh, radiation dose to the lens of the eye. So what we tended to use in of my sort of old hospital and other district journals as well is a baseline from the external auditory meatus to the supra orbit margin. You do get a little bit more beam hardening artifact um, but it does reduce the dose to the lens of the eye for these patients as well. On our database um, almost all of the images come from a neurological centre so even for me, it makes kind of discerning the different structures and the different levels a little bit tricky, simply because it's not uh, it's not what I'm used to looking at. But we can see from this image the different baselines, the different baseline used, but also where the different images reside, which I think is quite a useful thing to bear in mind when you're in the OSCE. So for example, this is series three, image one, series three, image five, series three, image nine, series three, image twelve. So that helps you kind of discern what level you're at if you're not particularly used to, look, used to looking at these types of images. So if we start looking through our images for this particular patient, we can see if we just have a quick look at the anterior of your image there, you can see a nice image of the lens of the eye there. Okay, and here around this area is our temporal lobes going the temporal bone around the outside and also posteriorly here we've got our cerebellum cerebellum essentially meaning little brain now the cerebellum um, that's believed to look after the coordination of motor functions so motor functions don't actually originate uh, from the cerebellum uh, they originate from the basal ganglia but there's believed to be a certain amount of coordination there so if we move on to this image now, we can see very clearly here again are our temporal lobes and we can see again the cerebellum. Here we've got the fourth ventricle. Now just anterior to the fourth ventricle is the pons. Now the pons comes from, I think it's the Latin or French, one of them anyway, uh, for bridge. And that's essentially what the pons is. It's a bridge between the brain and, well, between the cerebrum and the cerebellum and also the uh, spinal cord. So it, it's a conduit. It basically relays information between 
between the two. What we can also see here is our tentorum cerebelli and the reason why it's called tentorum is because it looks like an old school tent. So moving on to this image what you can see here is essentially the sort of last bit of the midbrain, sort of just superior to the pons. We can also start to see our temporal horns coming in here, and it's also the beginning of our frontal lobes here, with the folk cerebri running down the middle, splitting the two hemispheres. And if you look a little bit sort of posteriorly, you can sort of see the beginning of the folk cerebri there. Now there's a lot to take in um, on this particular image, so if we'll start with the ventricles we can see we've got the frontal or um, the anterior horns we can also start to see sort of around this area the occipital or posterior horns of the ventricles starting to come into view and smack bang in the middle there is our third ventricle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw on the image um, the sort of main structures of the uh, basal ganglia. Okay, so here we've got the three main um, parts of the um, basal nuclei. Okay, so here we've got the head of the caudate nucleus. Okay, this is the head of the lentiform nucleus. And this isn't actually part of the basal nuclei, but um, it's usually visible on these images, and that's the thalamus. So if you kind of try and mirror that on the other side, you can see head of the caudate nucleus, the lentiform nucleus, and the thalamus there as well. So here <coughs> we're now going to talk about the different lobes. So we've got the frontal lobe over here. And then this is the lateral fissure, which separates the frontal from the temporal lobe. And also around here we've got the occipital lobe. So the parietal lobe tends to come in a little bit more superiorly than this. So on this next slide, the folk cerebri becomes a little bit more apparent. So this is what's splitting our two cerebral hemispheres. And also here we've got so the remnants of our frontal horns and start to see a little bit more of our occipital horns here as well. So we've also got a little bit of atrophy in the frontal lobe on both sides here. Our occipital lobe. And here we've got sort of where the temporal lobe's just starting to, to go away, if you like, just starting to get rid of it. And then we've got the parietal lobe just starting to come in at the side at this sort of a little bit posteriorly on both sides there. Now this final slide is again a little bit more superiorly. See the four cerebri very very nicely there. Okay, and here we've got frontal lobe and finally parietal lobe here as well. So this is as we move ever more superiorly you start to lose the occipital lobe and start to get most of the parietal and frontal lobes there. Okay, so hopefully at the end of that you sort of should have a little bit more knowledge of sort of the major pieces of anatomy of the brain in cross-sectional imaging. If anybody has any questions they want to ask me um, about this particular set of images or the other then Obviously, please feel free to drop me a line by email, or if I'm on call, you can call me on the on-call phone. Um, thanks very much.